Hi everyone, this is Nurse Ryan, and today we're going to be talking about the drug propranolol, also known by the brand name Indorol and many others. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. Propranolol belongs to the beta blocker drug classification and is most commonly used as an antihypertensive medication, meaning it is used to treat high blood pressure, which is known as hypertension. Propranolol works by affecting a certain part of the nervous system. The part of the nervous system that is affected by propranolol is called the sympathetic nervous system, which is also known as the fight or flight nervous system. Let's quickly review the sympathetic nervous system before we get into propranolol specifically. The sympathetic nervous system is primarily responsible for increasing the amount of oxygen and blood flow throughout the body to help in fight or flight situations, like say when you need to fight or run away from a dinosaur for example. In these situations, your muscles require more oxygen, which requires a higher blood flow. The sympathetic nervous system is even naturally stimulated during regular stress and exercise. Some of the ways that the sympathetic nervous system accomplishes this increase in oxygen and blood flow is by constricting or narrowing blood vessels, which increases blood pressure and blood flow bronchodilating, which opens the airway allowing for more oxygen flow, and increasing heart rate, which also increases blood flow. Again, all of these effects occur when the sympathetic or fight or flight nervous system is stimulated. And how these effects are actually achieved is by stimulating different receptors throughout the sympathetic nervous system. Today, we'll just talk about the beta-1 and beta-2 receptors, also called beta-adrenergic receptors. The main effects of the beta-1 receptors is to increase heart rate, blood pressure, and cardiac output, while beta-2 mainly helps in bronchodilation. I always like to think one heart, two lungs, to remember that beta-1 deals with the heart and blood pressure, while beta-2 deals with the lungs. So finally, how does propranolol work with these beta receptors to treat high blood pressure? Propranolol blocks or inhibits the beta receptors. This is why we call propranolol a beta blocker. And if we block a receptor, we effectively get the opposite of what it normally does. So by blocking beta-1 receptors, propranolol decreases heart rate, decreases blood pressure by vasodilating, and decreases cardiac output. That's why propranolol is used as an antihypertensive. It is important to note that propranolol also blocks or inhibits beta-2 receptors. Again, normally, when stimulated, beta-2 mainly helps bronchodilate but when blocked, may cause bronchoconstriction. This may lead to bronchospasms in predisposed individuals. Because propranolol blocks both beta-1 and beta-2 receptors, we refer to it as a non-selective beta blocker. Non-selective because it isn't selecting a certain beta receptor to block, it just blocks them both. So again to sum up, propranolol inhibits beta-1 and beta-2 receptors of the sympathetic nervous system, primarily decreasing heart rate and decreasing blood pressure. So like we mentioned, propranolol is used as an antihypertensive for the management of high blood pressure by causing the blood vessels to dilate. The more dilated the blood vessels, the lower the blood pressure. The effects of propranolol also lead to a decreased workload of the heart, meaning the heart doesn't use as much oxygen or energy when you're taking propranolol. This can be very beneficial when dealing with angina, so propranolol can be used in the management of angina. Without going into detail, propranolol is also used in the management of atrial fibrillation, tachycardia, vascular headaches or migraines, and more. A lot of these side effects of propranolol relate to how the drug works. Propranolol may cause bradycardia, which is an abnormally low heart rate, hypotension, which is an abnormally low blood pressure, and arrhythmias. Hypotension may manifest as dizziness, fatigue, weakness, and more. Like we mentioned, propranolol may cause bronchospasms by blocking beta-2 receptors. And other side effects of propranolol include weight gain or edema, decreased libido and erectile dysfunction, insomnia and nightmares, dry eyes, and many more. Propranolol should not be used in patients with cardiogenic shock or hypotension due to the risk of significantly lowering blood pressure. Due to propranolol's effects on decreasing heart rate, it should also be avoided in patients with bradycardia, certain cardiac arrhythmias like heart block, which also results in a slowed heart rate, and more. Avoid use in patients with bronchial asthma, and as with many drugs, use cautiously in elderly patients and patients with hepatic or renal impairment due to their decreased ability to eliminate drugs. These patients may require lower doses of propranolol. Always remember to assess and monitor for side effects of propranolol. Monitor heart rate and blood pressure just before administration. 
Typically, insured heart rate is more than 60 beats per minute and systolic blood pressure is more than 90. Otherwise, hold the medication and notify the provider. Monitoring intake and output may be beneficial, especially in patients with heart failure. Mostly for elderly patients, provide teaching to avoid rapid changes in position, such as quickly changing from sitting to standing, to reduce the risk of orthostatic hypotension and falls. Ensure that diabetic patients are aware that beta blockers like propranolol may mask the symptoms of hypoglycemia, so more frequent blood glucose checks may be beneficial. Lastly, as with most all antihypertensive medications, it is important not to discontinue propranolol abruptly, but to instead gradually taper the dose according to the provider's instructions to reduce the risk of having a hypertensive crisis. And that's about it for the basics of propranolol. If this video has helped you out, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. If you have any questions or would like me to review a specific drug or topic, please let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.